History Night Talk. I'm your Saturday night host, Natalie. And I'm your Saturday night co-host, Jarena. We have two guests with us today. They were former slaves who broke free from slavery and impacted many slaves during the anti-slavery and civil rights movement. One of the former slaves will be so he couldn't fly all the way here. Instead, we will have him on a live call. These two will share their enthralling past as they take us back to the days where Africans were being captured to serve as slaves. Despite having to go through the horrible ways they were treated, these two have endured being treated like animals. They ran away with hope and courage, striving for a better life, for being held captive as slaves. Please welcome Bora and Savannah. Hello everyone, my name is Bora and I'm sorry I couldn't make it today. My name is Savannah, but you can call me Suvi. Let's just get this over with. I actually don't know my age since I was captured very young and wasn't given a proper education. Savannah, you went to school, right? Slaves were allowed to attend school in the 1860s. Now that we know who you guys are, we can start our interview. Our first question for you guys are, what was your life like before you became a slave? I lived in a small village with Bora in West Africa, and we were 13 years old at the time. We were both respected our parents greatly and worked hard to maintain the village. You must have had an enjoyable life back then. I'm glad you guys are living freely now. What happened before you guys were captured and taken to the ship? I woke up to the sound of many men yelling. I looked out my door and there was another African tribe working with a slave trader. Our men from our tribe started to grab weapons to defend. I had grabbed my club and worked outside ready to attack. Suddenly everything went black. Next thing I knew, I was captured. They had outnumbered our tribe. I woke up and looked around and saw the enemy chief making a deal with the slave trader. We were both tied up and chained with the other Africans. The slave trader started to yell at us and told us to move, and we, were, we listened to him in fear the thought of him whipping us. Oh, your, your villages must have been so peaceful. No one would expect an attack in the middle of the night. Out of curiosity, why were the other African tribes alliance with the slave trader? The slave traders thought of plan to capture Africans. One of the plans was to create an alliance between the black tribes, African American tribes, and the white tri slave traders. Both would work together to fight against the tribes to capture a bunch of blacks. Afterwards, the chief would turn in the captured slaves and ask the slave traders to give them items such as tobacco, guns, and many more that will benefit their people. What a cruel and terrible thing that other tribe had done. They decided to turn against their own kind and work with their enemies just to gain loot that could only benefit them. So, where were you taken after you were captured by those despicable slave traders? As I woke, my hands were tied tightly onto the rope that felt like it was piercing through my skin. The slave trader was waking up all of us, and we were forced to walk through a forest. The slave trader told us we'd be taken on board to the ship. He had handed us to the owner of the ship. In return, he got paid by the ship owner with articles such as liquor, yards of cloth, and other items I do not remember. We were boarded onto the vast ship with violence and were chained with other slaves down below. This area was called the Slave Gallery. Having to travel through all those obstacles must have severely weakened your bodies. You must have been in good shape to travel such distances. Well, how were the conditions on the ship for the Africans? Hopefully it was better than the kidnapping. The trip on the ship was way worse than walking through the forest. All the Africans were crammed together and there was hardly any room to move around. By the end of our journey, our back were all scarred from shreds of wood from the deck. Many of us on board had died during, due to the lack of food. All we, ha all we had to eat were yams and there were hardly enough food for any everyone. Others didn't want to bear with the pain anymore, so they jumped off the ship. They were also small, they were also small and unbearable since we weren't given fresh air and there were no restrooms. It must have been a sad sight to see many people being captured and dying on board. The prison must have made your limbs stiff by the end of the trip. Where were you taken after the ship landed in America? After the ship landed in America, Savannah and I were taken to our new slave owner. His name was Alan Tucker. He loaded Savannah and I and a bunch of other slaves into his wagon. We quietly sat in the back, patiently waiting to reach our destination as the wagon was pulled into a rocky trail. The wagon had pulled up a near big mansion with the plantation onto its side. What kind of work did Alan Tuckerman assign to both of you? I assume the work assigned was different for each gender? Yes, as a girl, I had to cook and do the housework and take care of the children. Sometimes when our owner fell as if we were behind on their costume business, 
she would order me to go to the plantation. As a guy, I had had to work on the plantation for hours. Once the sun sets, we are ordered to move to another task off the plantation. I know that around this time there was a great need for slaves. Some slave owners wanted to auction off their current slaves. Do you know why? So around the time, some slave owners were in debt. In order to gain some money, they sold their slaves. Other times, slave owners would sell off the slaves since their current slaves were unmanageable and they would fight back or run away. After the slaves were sold off, they were taken to the auction. What happened to the slaves before they were being auctioned? Before an auction was held, slave traders would try to make the merchandise look healthy, strong, and fed so the slaves could bring the highest price. The slave traders would make sure the slaves were fed only enough to keep them well until the auction was held. Those slave traders sure were sly and the tricks they used were uncultured. What happened to the slaves after they were bought by their new owners? Once we slaves were bought, the slave traders had us chained up together. We were forced to march through the woods and fields until we reached our destination. Once we got to our destination, we were given new clothing, rested up, and were given to our new masters. Unless we were sold again, had escaped, or died, this would be our current new home. How about when we say you were sheltered and fed? We are provided with log huts. The logs are hastily stacked. The wind, rain, and snow will blow through the cracks. Tens of dozens of men and women will be crammed in a single room on bare ground. There were no luxury, no wooden floor. As for food, we will only get two regular meals a day. Some masters favored certain slaves and gave them more food rations, although they were mostly strictly washed over. I heard that you and Bernard tried to escape from your masters once. What was your plan when you were trying to escape? Our escape plan was to sneak out after midnight so we could be covered by the dark. We were going to use the trees as cover as we ran away. Unfortunately, the master's closest slave had found out we ran away and snitched on us. Alan Tuckerman and his bloodhounds soon tracked us down and took us back to his plantation. When you guys were caught, what was the punishment for you two and other slaves? When we were caught, we were lucky that only our work was doubled and our master, all that our master did was scold us. Other slaves who ran away were beaten with a stick, flogged, or even sold to other masters. Did you guys have a religion? What did going to the church teach you guys? Savannah and I would attend church with our masters. Our religion was Christianity. During our Sunday studies, they would teach us to be nice to our masters, don't be mean, be obedient, and work hard. The Civil War started during this time. Can you give us some information on what this event was? The Civil War had started in April of 1861. This war was fought between the U.S. and the Confederate States of America. During the Civil War, what happened to the slaves? Around this time, the Yankee had started to pay slaves for work. Slaves escaped their own owners to join the army. Later, they allowed slaves to fight as a troop in the Union. I decided to escape with Bora from her master, and Bora fought fiercely throughout the war. I helped the injured while the male fought. On April 12, 1861, the Civil War finally ended, and I was so happy that me and Bora finally were free from our cruel master that then pursued to live a happy life after. We are so glad that you and Savannah were able to escape from the clutches of those evildoers. Overall, what was your view on slavery? Whenever I think of slavery, I'm infuriated. We were treated poorly and taken away from our families. I think slavery should never be allowed anywhere at any time. I agree with Savannah. We had to keep working for so many years. We were never treated like we were normal humans until now. I am grateful that all of this hardship is now over, and we can finally live in peace and leave all those bad memories behind. Slavery is still going on in some parts of the world, and that must be extremely frustrating. Well, I now have a deeper understanding about slavery. We are so glad to have this at our show tonight. Hey Natalie, did you know all this about slavery? No, no I didn't. I hope that the audience learned something new today, just like we have. Well, you know the saying, you'll never stop learning. Right. Come back on the History Night talk show at 6 p.m. EST every Saturday. Each week will surely teach everyone something new about USA's history. What do you guys want to learn next? Submit your questions on our website at www.historynighttalk.com slash questionsforum.net and maybe we'll just pick yours. Look forward to exciting guests each night regarding the topic. I'm your Saturday night host, Natalie. And I'm your Saturday night co-host, Irina. See you guys next, next week on History Night, Night Talk, Talk Show. Show. Bye!